welcome everybody. Uh, today we are going to continue uh, where we left off in the previous video. If you don't know what the project is about, I encourage you to check out the first or well, the zeroth uh, devlog where I explain what uh, I'm going to do in Bevy. But today uh, we are going to pick up the little inspector editor stuff that we have here. As you can see, we already have the panels. We can uh, load and save the, the state of the UI uh, and the state of the window. Mm, which is great, um, but uh, if you were to move something around, you can't undo it. So it's inconvenient for the moment. So what we are going to do, uh, we are going to do a, a, um, a naive implementation of, a, of an undo. And we are going to use um, an utility uh, that you can find in EGUI. It will work for the moment. It's not going to be perfect and I will probably not keep it uh, for long. Um, I will explain that uh, at the end of the video. So I'm going to create another plugin. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling most of my videos will start with uh, creating a new plugin. With that, uh, we have something that's mounted. It shouldn't do anything just yet. But to start off, uh, let me just uh, show you the thing I'm going to, uh, to use it here. It's called an undoer. Uh, it's a utility uh, of EGUI. And if you read through it, uh, you will see that this is a very lean thing. Uh, what it does, it takes a state, and if it's different from the previous state that you fed it, uh, it will create an undo point. Uh, you can configure how many undo points you want, and it supports uh, detecting typing, for instance, uh, by keeping track of the time uh, since the last uh, undo point. So if you type uh, and then you undo it, it won't undo it character by character, but uh, for, for, a, for a larger block. It's not really useful for us yet, um, or maybe at all, but we are going to use the rest of its functionality to just keep track of uh, the states. However, this is a, not straightforward because you need a state that's, uh, that's comparable. So if you look at the, the definition of the state, let's go to the state. Yeah, there you go. This is the point. The state must be clone and partial equal. The state must implement those two. When you think about state in, in a Bevy app, you would consider the whole world. Yeah, right, so the whole uh, bevy word that uh, that we are currently in. It's not the right way to think about it in in, an, in, a, in the case of an editor, because the editor you, you you should consider it as two words basically, one of the editor world and one of the edited world. So the thing that you are editing uh, should be the thing that you are displaying everywhere, and that's one of the reasons why the inspector GUI is not going to be. Um, a long-term choice for us because it it relies on the specific word of the the uh, the, the quote-unquote word that we are currently in, which is not what we want. We would need to implement panels or you know plugins for it to to specifically filter and find the the, the part of the hierarchy or the word that we want to to edit. And for the rest of the the word, the editor word, we should create a specific. Uh, you know, panels and, and UI components to, to, to manage, like the, the editor camera, the light and, and greed and whatever, you know. But for now, uh, we just want to make sure that we can undo something. And Bevy provides a way to extract parts of the world and uh, build something that you can serialize to create prefabs, for instance. And we are going to use that. We are going to just feed uh, the, the Undoer plugin uh, with a string. Uh, we don't care what it is. We just serialize the parts of the word that we know that we can serialize because not everything in the in the word is uh, serializable, and it shouldn't be because it's in flux all the time. So the time resource, for instance, it just you know changes uh, every frame. Um, makes no sense to to create an undo on on that particular thing. But that doesn't mean that we can't extract parts of the word that we can serialize and and work with that. And Bevy provides that uh, for us. The only thing that we won't be able to sup support is uh, adding and removing correctly. But for the moment, we are not adding entities or removing entities, so we don't particularly care about that. We could also build our own state object specifically for the, the use case that we are trying to handle. 
and just feed that to the Yamdu plugin and then rebuild uh, the changes from, from that. It is also not very, you know, performant to, to just extract and serialize uh, the whole state of the app, every frame, if it, I mean, for simple cases, it works, we don't care. Uh, but for a larger scene, uh, that's not going to be maintainable. Anyway, um, to jump uh, straight in, I'm going to create a resource to hold our uh, undoer. We have the word. How do we get the word that we want? If you look at Bevy, uh, there is something called the dynamic scene. And this one has a handy method to, to say from word, which will create a dynamic scene from the word. And the dynamic scene itself will hold all of the resources and entities from said word. Um, the only problem is that uh, this extracts everything and we don't want that. So let, but if you look at the thing uh, itself, it's, it's using a builder and we can use that builder ourselves. And if you, so instead of uh, doing this, I, I'm just going to create another function to extract the scene that we want. And then later on, we can customize just this part to, to get uh, the components and entities that we want. This one also has the from word method, but we can customize it. And this is the, the, the neat part. First of all, I'm going to deny all of the resources. I do not want any of the resources to end up in the undo scene for now. Later on, we can add the resources that we want to support undoing and redoing. But most of the resources are uh, things like time and, and the panel configuration and whatnot, which usually you don't want to, to mess with. And uh, for the moment, I'm going to allow mm, just transforms for a te for test. This is this is where you can uh, list all of the components that you want to be part of the word that you are extracting. And then we can extract entities. And to do that, I mean, I'm practically copying this part here. So let, let, let's do that. Let's just copy it. Actually, if you look at the and what it does, it will tell you exactly what it does. So you can uh, read this later on. And once we extracted the entities, we do not want to extract. Normally, you would extract resources as well. OK, let's keep it here, uh, but we don't really need it because we denied all of the resources. They, they are not going to be there, but it will be easier to just, you know, uh, add the resources later on and not forget this one and have a headache, you know. And then we just build it. That's it. It will give us a dynamic scene with all of the components that we've selected. But here comes the, the problematic part. Uh, you need to somehow uh, serialize it. This won't work yet, because I believe we are going to need to import the actual RON uh, crate. So let's, let's do that. Let's uh, pick up Ron. And once we have that, this should, in theory, feed our state to the underwear. We give it a time, so that's how it uh, can keep track of changes in the making, you know. The other thing we want is a way to undo, actually, the thing that we did. So far, so good. So this one will give us a state when there is something to undo. And when it when there is something to undo, we need to repopulate that to the to the world.
All right. And this should work. Um, just like that. So where did I get all of those things? So if you go here and look at the entity map that it's waiting for, uh, where it's used, this is where it's used. And this is where it maps the existing entities to the, the ones you, you deserialized. This is, this is also the reason why we cannot remove this way because it will create one that doesn't exist and update one, one that exists, but it cannot delete it. It won't delete it. You have to specifically uh, delete it. Uh, so we should do a, uh, um, a comparison between the two uh, and, and see if uh, anything is missing. But this is a bit difficult with uh, this, this type of approach uh, because, again, it's not meant to be so robust. Anyway, let's... Let's try it. Uh, it. It will take some time, I think, uh, now that we have an extra dependency. And uh, just to quickly test it, let's do this. I press Ctrl Z and it goes back. If I do it twice, it goes back. But that's because of the timing thing. See, um, the, the undoer is waiting for a little bit uh, before it creates an undo point. Um, so that's why if you do it quickly, it will just go back to the beginning instead of uh, step by step going back. It's the same as when you are typing, basically. Um, this is one of the limitations of, of doing it this way. But let's grab another one. There we go. You, you cannot redo it, of course. So if I press that, it just changes my gizmo. Um, we, we can do a, a redo as well. The easy way to do it Everywhere. Let's do another one, uh, which is basically the same as the Andor. However, we are not going to feed its state. Uh, we are not going to feed its state every update. We are going to make sure that when we press undo, what's anod? We feed its state at that point. And for that, Yeah, there you go. This is the trick. This is how you get multiple fields at the same time uh, for your resource writable ones. This won't do anything just yet. So we also have to create the function to actually, you know, redo one key press. So I'm just going to copy this and so here is the thing. I'm going to undo it and then I'm going to redo it. And undo it, redo it, undo, redo. So this this works. Um, I can just you know move things around. Uh, let's say, oops, uh, undo that, <laughs> undo, undo. But I want to redo the first two. Uh, but here comes the problem. Uh, so if I say, um, let's say the, 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 this one, uh, if I do it like this. I can still redo it, you see, and uh, get back to a sort of a state. Uh, this is because after the undo, if I do something that's different than the current uh, last re redo state, I, I should throw away all of the redo states because we split at the path and then we go went the other way. Um, this is currently uh, not not doable with the. Uh, with the undoer as it is right now, because you don't have access to the internal parts that we need. So we did, we created an undo redo system that works for very simple cases in small cities. So if you, if you don't plan to manage large open worlds or, you know, complicated systems with thousands of entities and state you want to push into your undo stack, it should work. Maybe, maybe it would make sense to not have a whole redo a thing here, just one string, for instance, the last step you undid, uh, and then you can just uh, uh, support a one step of redo instead of uh, multiple steps of redo. That would be uh, uh, simple enough to do, I think, and it would probably just work fine for uh, most day-to-day -day use cases. Anyway, thank you and talk to you later. Until then, have fun. Ciao, ciao.